God, live on the big one, Facebook Live. Welcome, 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 I say, to the Scotty McClue Show. One hour of superb scintillating information, education and entertainment for you. Not just one nation, but all the nations, of course. And we are back in the studio tonight, and that is fabulous. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Scotty McClue with you through until 11 o'clock. So there we are. We've a lot to discuss tonight. So to your telephones as quickly as possible or to your messengers or to your typings or whatever it is you go to. I say James Lafferty. Hi, Scotty. Hi, James. Lovely to have you with us. Great stuff. Ian Walker, they let you out, Scotty. Absolutely. Hi, Scotty, says everybody. Welcome, welcome back, folks. Now, thank you very much for bearing with me over the last month, of course. Our broadcasts have been sporadic, to say the least. But here we are all back together again, live on Facebook Live, that great broadcast platform, the one that everyone's talking about, the one everyone is watching. We're reshaping the way the world receives television. Of course, this is us absolutely live here and now. I'll prove it to you. Uh, hi, Scotty, says James. Hi, Scotty, says Lewis. And uh, Dave Hemsley, hi Scotty, hey Scotty, says John Bryce, you can see it in front of you, so you know we are absolutely live. So much to catch up on tonight, you make the comments, I tell the nation what's happening, and we discuss them. So there you are, we have the lamp on behind, but maybe it's too much, do let me know what you think. Uh, so there we go, now lots and lots of sharing tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you to every single one of you for sharing over the past month, for bearing with me. Although the signals have not been great, we've still managed to get in touch. Hi, this is Jackie Flynn. Hi, Jackie Dinky Do for me. Scotty McClure, just for you. Robbie Allen. Hi, Scotty. Hi, Scotty. The only radio man with a tie. Absolutely. I won't tell you, but when we're on the radio, we don't necessarily always smart it up so there you are good morning scotty from sydney in australia says ali Haining. good morning ali lovely to have you with us in sydney in australia my granny loved you on scott fm says robbie allen thanks for that robbie dinky do to you and give my fondest regards to your granny big style Hello, Scotty. Hope you're doing well from Alabama in the USA. Dean Elson, I need to ask you, how do you think Scotty McClure will go down in New York City? That's what's being discussed at the moment. A massive, massive broadcast right across New York City. How do you think that will go down? Tell me there. And I hope that although you're in Alabama, where I've just come from with my banjo on my knee. I hope that you'll be able to tell me how you think Scotty McClure would go down in the United States in general. Uh, cheers. I will, mate, says Robbie. Thank you very much. Hello from Paisley, says Peter Ewing. Peter, were you getting a bit fed up with everybody coming on worldwide from Australia, New Zealand, Canada, America, Alabama there in the US of A? Fantastic. So Peter's on from Paisley in Scotland. Dinky do to you, Paisley. Now, so much things have been happening. So much things. So many things have been happening. So much has been happening. Just general excitement there, folks. You'll have to forgive me. Johnny Emily Day, what are we talking about tonight, Scotty? We're talking about if common sense does not prevail, and we do actually end up leaving the EU, should we go back to pounds shillings and pence i'll tell you why later i'm not going to spoil you right now so i'll tell you why i'm saying this later but i want to know your opinion on it call the crew from james absolutely hi from lennox town says gerald mckay mckay tremendous stuff do you believe in ghosts says johnny emily yes johnny i have actually encountered a ghost i couldn't see anything but the spirit was as clear as a bell so there you are. Uh, no, we shouldn't. Uh, hi, Scotty from Norfolk in the United Kingdom. Dave Cordingley is down in Norfolk in the fens there. And, oh, Norfolk will be smelling of onions right now. Am I right? Rural Lincolnshire and North Norfolk. Onions. Oh, that clears your side, as I shall tell you. Pronounced called the Crooks 
I know James how to say Calder Crew and Calder Crooks as well. And um, why uh, is that any particular reference? So you can tell me about that. Tell me more about the encounters of Johnny Emlyny. I was working in my study one night a long time ago in another part of the world. Sounds like the start of a story, doesn't it? And um, I was just suddenly felt very, very cold indeed. Very cold, shivery cold. And I was drawn to the center of the room. And I stared at the center of the room and I said, who are you and what can I do for you? And there was a relaxation of tension. There you are. Can you please say hello to my wee sister, Robin Carroll, says Scooter. Of course I can, Scooter. Hello, Robin, and Dinky Doo from Scotty McClure, the world's top broadcaster, just for you. Uh, Marx said the capitalist system is fraught with internal contradiction. Robbie, he's quite right. I know it says see more, but I don't like to risk it. The last time I clicked that, I lost the broadcast. Hello from Wisho or Wishy, says Bobby McLaughlin. Dinky do Wishy, a fine, fine part of the world. Do you remember when Scotty McClue officially visited Wishy and they were hanging out the windows? Uh, oh, no ghost talk, please, says Angie Thompson. Why not, Angie? These are just poor souls who haven't quite yet got sorted. Literally poor souls. What did you have to do for the ghost? Well, I did later. I had to put off a CD. It was uh, the wonderful Kenneth McKellar singing, Do no sinful action, speak no angry word. Ye belong to Jesus, children of the Lord. And I got a vice-like grip round the back of my neck. Get that off. So there you go. So I don't know if the ghost had lost a child or what was happening. Hi, Scotty. I'm carrying on my media studies and radio work. Would you like to come on our hospital radio station? Says Tony Mac. Tony, that is fabulous. I would love to. I'm a bit maxed at the moment, though. I really do not have a spare second. This might sound uh, a bit shocking to say, but I barely had time to broadcast tonight. But I thought I must speak to the universe. Uh, do you know, some news news here. I'm sure you what things are going on. Everyone really needs to get together. Ghosts are guardian angels, says D. Very, very good, D. Very important. The spirits, Ghostbusters, says Michael McGuigan. Absolutely. Good evening, says Eileen Halton. And guys, you know I know I would never sell you a pup. You know I would never give you um, a bum steer, as they say. What's the topic tonight, says Louis Faber? Topic tonight, Louis. You should have been there at the start. You're a naughty, naughty boy. However, since you're in London, we'll forgive you. You no doubt get caught in rush hour traffic. Right? Rush hour at this time of night in London? Rush hour 24-7 in London. It's not quite New York City, but there we are. Topic tonight, if we come out of Brexit, if we actually did do, which hopefully we won't do, then um, should we go back to pounds, shillings and pence? Uh, ghosts, Louis, says Johnny Emlyny. Yes, we are discussing ghosts. Uh, has Mr. and Mrs. Fox been back on? Angie, yes, Mr. and Mrs. Fox. Did you see Mr. Fox at the garden in McClure Towers the other night? I was just doing the dishes at the sink there, you know, a man's work is never done. And um, a wee visitor appeared, so you'll see him. He's on YouTube now, a visitor to McClure Towers. Yes, the stretch limo during your visit. And I thought Elvis had arrived in Wisher Scotty. Bobby McLaughlin, I've never seen a crowd like it. Even the poor Queen, I don't think, gets her turned out like Scotty McClure. I think I'll have to come round more Scottish villages. Stretch limo. Ardbrechnish, says James Lafferty. What was that Ardbrechnish? What are we talking about? I'm not long back from the whole weekend fishing on Loch Awe. Lots of ghosts there. Oh, yes, up the road, yes. Past the Carrigthura and um, on to the top of Loch Awe, you would see uh, the wonderful Culhern Castle, Culchum Castle. Uh, Mr. Fox has gone viral. It was beautiful says Angie Thompson. It really was. He was absolutely gorgeous. Came up and had a wee look. Do you see when he disappeared and then came back? So there you are. In the background, you can hear the dog having his supper. If you could come back as a ghost, what would you do? Would you do a show as a ghost? I might be doing one now, for all you know. So there we are, Johnny M. Linney. Uh, there's no way back from Brexit. I thought once Article 50 was triggered, there'd be no going back. Tony, there's always a chance to go back. It just needs people with a big set to actually say to Europe, look, we're sorry about all this nonsense. 
uh, just forget that email and we'll go back to as we were. I'm just back from Weight Watchers. I saw a few mediums there. Very good, John. Very good. Um, it was incredible. Never saw anything like it before or since, says Bobby McLaughlin. What are you talking about, Bobby? <coughs> Scotty, where do you buy your bonnets? Well, I think I can do a little bit of advertising with this one. Here we go. This one is um, it's a Field Pro, and it's from Hogs of Fife, a very, very famous country store. So there you are, Hogs of Fife. Now, a little advert. Thank you very much. I'm expecting a nice pair of Viltshire. <laughs> only teasing, only teasing. But a very fine shop. They do beautiful boots um, and all the rest of it. And they obviously do exquisite bonnets. So Scotty McClue is wearing the Hogs of Fife bonnet. And uh, there you are, Scotty. I've missed you, says Mark Nugent. Hi, Mark. Lovely to hear you. No, Scotty. Scotland could go back, but not England. They have burned their bridges. Ian Walker. You have never, ever burned your bridges in politics. So there you are. So you can always go back and you can always grow a set and say, sorry. That's all it's saying. One word. Sorry. Evening, Scotty. I enjoyed the Fox video the other day. Nice that you look after the wildlife around. I wonder what you'd see if you left the camera on all night in the garden, says Gareth Rolly Jones. I would imagine what I call a person, uh, a badger. So there you are. Imagine you see a badger. I have seen, uh, you know, the little waggly backside disappear up the path. So there you are. Uh, not just uh, LSD after Brexit. Go back to imperial measurements like miles, inches, pounds, ounces. Any more you can give me? What about thirkins? Yes, a thirkin. And uh, what about um, a rood? A rood. A rood and a thirkin. And a chain. And a furlong. What about a furlong? Uh, so there you are. My dad gets his bonnets for a man shop, says Angie Thompson. Dinky do, Angie Thompson. Lovely to have you with us. It's great to be back, folks. And thank you so much for your forbearance over the last four weeks when I was very often out of range. The groat, yes. Do you know how much a groat was? Have you any idea, John Rogers? How many pennies were there in a groat? McClue knows, of course, but he's just testing you out. Ian Walker, uh, I think you need people to enjoy history. Scotty, exactly where are you? Says D. Nelson. I am in Bonnie, Scotland at the moment. So they are broadcasting from the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Uh, the cost of holidays is going up through Brexit, don't you find, Scotty? Well, I don't know. I don't take holidays, Cat. How sad is that? Angie Thompson, you came from a land down under. Your Aussie hat gave you away. My jackaroo? Did you like my jackaroo? So there you go. What about if I'm going across the pond to New York City to broadcast if one of the big networks picks up the Scotty McClue show? Don't worry, though. We'll still be able to get in touch via Facebook Live. Dark nights are creeping in, says General Mackay Mackay. No, not at all, Mr. Mackay Mackay. Remember you in the, two, in the uh, porridge, Ronnie Barker. That's right. Do you think Brexit will happen, Scotty, says James Lafferty? I think what may happen, if they don't have a big enough set to say no, we're sorry. I think what may happen is a very, 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 very watered down version. So effectively, we will still be in Europe as such. I think that's what will happen. But it will be sold into you and I as we've left. So that sort of stuff. I'm heading to England. Higher soon because I love the English. Uh, just because I dislike Westminster doesn't diminish my love for God's forsaken island. Richard Eyre, I am exactly the same. I have a great adoration for English people and for England. I've lived in England a lot of my life. I've lived in London. I've lived in Sheffield twice. So there you go. I've lived in Carlisle. I've lived in Preston. I've lived in Blackpool. All these sort of things. I've been all over. I broadcast to the Midlands and to Yorkshire. I adore Yorkshire. So there's nothing at all. We're only talking about a change of administration. Saying to Westminster, excuse me, but from now on, we will be in charge of our own DOSH. And we will be in charge of our own administration. So you lot can chill and get on with whatever it is you're doing badly. There you are. 
And what I was thinking this week, and don't tee haw laughing at this, guys. Why not call all of the United Kingdom Scotland and run it from Edinburgh or run it from Westminster, but put the Scottish government in power uh, to run it because uh, until the lot we've got, just sideline them at the moment and say, uh, you know, we'll be taking over. So in other words, ask the Queen if she could uh, put the Scottish government into Westminster and they run the show. That would be a good idea. Uh, the wife's sister, says James Lafferty. Yes, she's from our Breckneysh. Aha! Here, here, says William Shepherd. That's fair enough. Never heard it so well put, says Gaz Rolly Jones. Absolutely, Gaz. Listen, McClue's got all the ideas. I'm just not really a politician. I'm an economist. So that's my thing. I'm a banker with a B. There we are. I understand finance. And, uh, you know, the reason that Westminster will not let Scotland just walk away is because they'd be 40 billion quid down the swanee. That's where you're getting all this better together nonsense flowing out of uh, Westminster. If you're ever in the U.S., come to Alabama. We'd love to show you around. Thank you for bringing folks together. I have friends over that way, says D. Nelson D. This time last week, I was talking to people from New York City. So there you go, fantastic. Um, you're too nice a person. You couldn't be a politician, says Gaz Rolly Jones. Probably not, Gaz. I'm not interested in climbing over folk and stabbing folk in the back and trying to score points. I'm interested in wisdom. I'm interested in justice. I'm interested in honor. I'm interested in integrity. I'm interested in strengthening the market, in strengthening the country in right, always winning, in good, triumphing over evil, etc., etc. That's what Scotty McClue's about, with a good bit of fun flung in. Scotsminster, says George Raffin. Why not, George? Absolutely, Scotty. All the debt we owe is owed to ourselves. Democracy is a stick to beat us with. Well, there we are. Unless you want a Scotty McClue dictatorship, you're stuck with democracy. Uh, do you think there'll be another general election after Brexit, if it goes ahead? Says Tony Mac. I think there might be another election quite soon, to be honest. The last one should never have been called. And guys, this is a point that I'm made till I'm blue in the pus, but it's very important to grasp it, right? Please grasp this. If we'd had a Scotty McClue national megaphone in right across the UK, either done by the National Public Service broadcaster on their major networks or by a commercial operator, right? They wouldn't have had to call that election because it would all have been discussed. There wouldn't have been any nonsense over Brexit. There wouldn't have been any nonsense over Scottish independence because you, sorry it's rude to point, but you and me, pointing at myself now, right you and me would have discussed it in front of every single politician and every single member of the nation and if the transmitters had been powerful enough we'd have discussed it across europe you and me the people would have discussed it then you can call your referendum when we've discussed it now obviously the ballot box is fairly secret so you might not do what you'd said you would do on the television or on the wireless, but nevertheless, at least we'd have discussed it. <clears throat> By the time that happens, Trump and the North Korea leader will have us barbecued. Angie, don't be fooled by that. All that noise and rhetoric that's going on, right? Um, if you think about it, Mr. Khrushchev, the Russian president, spoke to John F. Kennedy at the time of the, the Cuba crisis and said young man be very careful about mobilizing your military because once you mobilize them you can't stop them so the trick is for politicians to ensure that they don't mobilize the military because the military are so very very good at what they do they will leave no stone unturned do you follow me all right 
You're looking well, Scotty, says Alex Robertson. I'm sure you are too, sir. Dinky do. You're asking me to be your agent. That would not be a problem. I think Mrs. McClure or the dog wants. I'm going to risk it. See more. Oot to hear the ping ping on your iPad's bat needs changed. So there we are. I don't think so. I don't think that's what it is. I think what you're hearing is um, the Facebook page in the background. You're probably hearing Messenger. Scotty, what book would you take to the Fallout Shelter? Mine's would be the Ragged Trouser Philanthropist of the Bruins Annual 1975. Lol! An excellent read. You might find a lot of people at the shelter were borrowing that from you. So there we are. I'll tell you what I've been reading a lot of recently, though. Andrew Marr. So there you are. And you can tell him I said that. His writing is excellent. It really is first class. Fine, very fine bit of political writing. Couldn't have done it better myself. Um, well, you know, I haven't tried. Oh, if you want a read of chapter one of Scotty McClure's Thriller, you go to YouTube. You'll have to write this down because you don't want to leave the program. You go to YouTube and uh, you put in Scotty McClure reads Deliver Us From Evil. All right, you'll get chapter one. Big difference, we are a country, I have about 10 chickens in the yard. Um, I'm close to the Gulf of Mexico. I'd love to show you uh, anyone in my area. I just pray our country stay united. <coughs> I like learning about, there we go, a bit more here. Uh, right, that's that, I'll leave that, okay. Uh, just let me leave that. Oh. Oh, there we are. Good evening, Scotty. Mr. Marr, says James Lafferty. Yes, Andrew Marr. Excellent political writing. Aye, when's the next bit coming out? You can't leave chapter one like that. I've got no nails left, says Andrew Thompson. Isn't it interesting? Father James McNally. Oh, so there you go. Uh, I'll tell you, yes. Now, uh, Iceland are doing well. So there we go. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, Iceland left the EU and they seem to be doing fine. Uh, we're talking about different countries, says Dean Nelson. Absolutely. But uh, listen, remember you can have as many countries as you like. Everybody smiles in the same language. There is only one race, the human race, you and I. Uh, put the Skype on, Scotty, says Dean of the Doug. No, because you'll use it. Uh, chapter 2 is on Netflix. <laughs> so there we go. Fantastic. So there you are. Uh, see what you think about that, guys. Now, if Brexit did go ahead for any reason, would you agree to going back to pounds, shillings and pence? Now, I haven't told you why yet, but there's a very, very good reason. There's always method in McClure's madness. Remember that. Big style. Um, hi, Scotty. My wife thinks your call to Mr. Martin was made up. Can you set the record straight? He deserved a good telling off from you. Well, you listen to the call and you decide, Tony. Amen, Scotty, says D. Absolutely, D. And dinky do to you, D, from Scotty McClue. Now, if you've just joined us, a very warm welcome. I am Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster. We're live on Facebook Live, one of the world's great broadcast platforms very important just a quick word about housekeeping if you can all go on scotty mcclure youtube channel stick it into google at the end of the show and um, follow me and subscribe very important follow me on facebook all the time because i have so many people want to become friends i need you to follow me follow me on twitter at scotty mcclure or one word also, follow me on Periscope. You'll see stacks of broadcasting. And since we last spoke, I've signed up with Patreon.com. And you can become a patron for a dollar. Okay? Very important. So get on to Patreon.com. We should go back to using the Scottish national currency of ginger bottles, says Sean Fitzharris. Absolutely throttles back in the bottle. Uh, my Egyptology teacher has a crisp buzz. And it said Tuppens on it. Was that? Says Angie Thompson. Yes, Tuppens was just under 1p. There's 2.4 old Ds in a P. 
Uh, pounds and ounces, bring that back. The avoir du poids. Two pints, one quart. There we are. Four quarts, one gallon. Uh, good morning from Australia. It's good to have a very smart man. You should be on every day, says Erica Meyer. I wonder, Erica, if there's room for uh, mainstream broadcasting in Australia as well as America. The Americans are falling in love with me. So it's big, 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 big business across the pond. And I've been invited to go to New York City. So we're just sorting out, seeing if we can get networks uh, to join in. You have not accepted my friend request on Facebook, says William Shepherd. I thought I had, William. I'll have a look at that. Have you been to Edinburgh for the Fringe, says Cameron Constable. Cameron, I haven't managed to Edinburgh because I have other projects on at the moment. But would you like a Scotty McClue show at the Fringe? Now, you've got a choice of two. You can either have a bit of uh, a, a natter like this, a bit of stand-up, a bit of nonsense. Or you can have an evening with Scotty McClue. And that's when I get interviewed and you ask me questions about me personally, my life and times. Remember, Scotty McClue was 25 years old three weeks ago. Scotty, what's going on? I see on TV what to do in a nuclear explosion. And now I've seen a leaked speech for the Queen for World War Three. Are we really close to the brink of the end of the world? No. No, I don't think so. Uh, William Shepard says yes. <laughs> I've just celebrated my 12th wedding anniversary. Mrs. Mack sends her love to you. We're both great fans of you. Tony Mack, I'm a big fan of yours, as you know. A Q&A and some funny like the old radio shows, says Angie Thompson. Would you come along, Angie? And what should be the fee at the door? So there we are. Uh, that would be a good partnership, says James Lafferty. Absolutely. Have you seen his napper? There's been a fringe there since 1972. So there we are. My fringe is getting a wee bit further back. Let's see if we can get you a wee bit of fringe. Nope, well, quite difficult to find it. Uh, why should you have? Why should they have a fringe type in the glass? They should have. Sorry, William Shepherd says they should have a fringe in Glasgow. Would you back a West of Scotland fringe? I'm going to have a sip, guys. Uh, what time have we got? Oh, my goodness, it's share time. Long, long past it. Share, 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 share. Share, 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 share. Uh, so there you go. The New York phone companies will send you a guy called Vinny to see you if you start a phone in, says Ian Walker. Brilliant. If we short out the network for New York City. Uh, we have a fridge in Glasgow. Good evening, Scotty. Did you do? That's lush. Lush. Right. Uh, good evening, Scotty. Thank you do. Excellent stuff. Good evening to you. Now, more news as if you hadn't had enough, right? Um, should we have a Scotty McClue breakfast show on social media? Now, here's the plan. It would have to start around 6 o'clock sharp in the morning and perhaps go on till 6.15, 6.30. And it would be the way the world wakes up up right we'd have a quick look at a couple of news stories would see what the markets had closed at we'd have a chit chat with ourselves and see how that went we might find a way of taking some messages so there you go is that lemon barley water says andrew thompson you're pretty much there it's actually orange so there you go uh, my hamster died captain he was at the wheel at the time Uh, Giuseppe Bacchetti says, I see. What do you mean to see? See, scusi, scusi, Giuseppe, see. Uh, you're on the home brew, Scotty. Yeah, James, ah, Limsips, says Ian Walker. Now, can you also tell me, Ian Walker, you're one of the ones that I'm pointing the finger at right now. Pointy, pointy. Why do people knock the royal family? It's the wrong thing to do. Please stop it. So there we go. Uh, Scotty, have you ever had a suicide call on your shows? I'm considering it if you keep on about the royals. Ian Walker, we will always mention the royals because they are our sovereigns. The queen is our sovereign lady. She is the queen 
of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. She is the Queen of Scotland. She is 50% Scots. Okay, thank you. Uh, Scotty, what's happening, you banger? So Steph McIlvaney. Steph, we are in the middle of a show, do you mind? We're talking not just to one nation, but to every nation. And as the BBC would say, nation shall speak peace unto nation. Um, yes, I have had suicide callers and we have apparently saved lives. I remember being interviewed by um, Jenny Murray, the great Jenny Murray, on Radio 4 on a programme called The Message. And there was a guy on attacking the style of broadcasting that I tend to do, or all the styles that I tend to do. But um, what I was actually saying to him was, look, even if we'd only saved one life, and we know we've saved many, it's well worth doing it. So stop your nonsense. So there we are. Uh, who's this guy, Dalton? What royal was he? Ah, oh, the royal Dalton. John Rogers. Alfred James Wright, are you a subject or a citizen, Scotty? It depends what we're discussing. Are we discussing subjects or are we discussing citizens? I am a loyal subject of Her Majesty the Queen. I am a citizen of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. I'm also a citizen of the world. And I am an, a member of the human race. And I am an honorary member of uh, the human race as well. So there you go. Uh, you will see the light, Scotty, when your dementia clears up. Ian Walker, I have seen the light all my life. I've never heard so much nonsense in my life. And I'll thank you not to knock dementia. Right. A senior citizen, says John Roger. Very senior, indeed. Uh, you did mind the guy. You both ended up in fits of laughter. Did you ever hear back from him? Andrew Thompson. Yes, yes, I mean, absolutely. Uh, there's lots of people in fits of laughter. Scotty, after Brexit, do the Germans get the raw family back? Steph, stop trying to be funny. I would like to know about your genetic makeup. A wee spittle in the cup and a wee examination of your DNA, and I think you will get your eyes opened big time. You will find you're from the African Rift Valley. So don't be knocking the rolls. It's like Prince Philip used to get called Philip the Greek. He's actually Danish, for goodness sake. Uh, Scotty, I've heard you helping callers on the radio. You're excellent. You always are my great admiration and respect. I thank you, Tony, and dinky do to you. If you've just joined us, folks, you're watching Scotty McClue with the World's Top Talk Show. We're live on Facebook Live, the world's great broadcast platform, the one everyone's watching, the one everyone's talking about. We have a new way of receiving our television. It's through Facebook Live. Fantastic. Uh, Scotty, do you think we'll ever get the trade deals we're expecting after Brexit, says Martin Holden? I don't know, Martin. I, I think what's happening, we should stick in with Europe now because we're trading well. And Scotland's been trading with Europe for nigh on a thousand years, uh, perhaps even more than that. Uh, you know, so fantastic stuff. So I wouldn't be knocking it, to be quite honest. Um, I'm a Balcaris. We have a castle in Edinburgh. Research it. Yes, I'm sure you do, Angie. No problem at all. So there you go. You probably go back to the African Rift Valley via Ireland. That's why it makes me laugh when people talk about the French or the Germans or the English or the Scots. There's only one race, the human race, and we are all members. Uh, fantastic. The trade deals, yes, it depends how good the negotiators are. I may offer myself up as a Brexit negotiator uh, just on a freelance basis. If I can find the time, uh, you know, that would be quite good and get down to some serious, serious negotiation. Uh, so there you are. Scotty, I'm in the bad books. You're talking over my partner trying to watch telly. But I'm not budging. John Roger, do not budge. In fact, say to your partner, stick that off and watch Scotty McClue. This is better for you than any telly, for goodness sake. What are these people thinking of watching telly when Scotty McClue's on? I have never, ever in my life heard the like of it. How rude. Right, there you are. Sorry, I've just told you I missed it off. I hope you don't mind. Uh, so that's it. So there's John. Um, now, what else are we getting here? Lots and lots of different things. Time. 
share time, share, 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 share. Grab yourselves also a stub of a hard blank pencil and a thruppany jotter with nay batter. You'll find it usually beside your telephone. And what you can do here, hold on while I take one of my hairs away. That's better. There we are. Sorry, it had come down. It had crept down below my bonnet. Um, so because there's things to write down, I want you to write down patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Scotty McClure, all one word. Scotty, I have to say good evening. I hope you and everyone has a blessed day. Stay safe, says Dean Nelson. Dean Nelson, you are a person of great manners. I thank you. Dinky do, you stay safe and have a wonderful, wonderful week. And thank you so much for coming on. Uh, Darwin was um, right about the survival of the fittest. Fittest, Ian. There's an Ian there. Humans look after their sick and elderly and the African Rift Valley has no archaeology beyond 300 BC. I know my stuff, Scotty. Lol. You don't actually know your stuff. Ancient Egypt is 7,500 years BC old. That makes it 9,517. Okay? 9,517. 9,000 years ancient Egypt. Right? And they were pretty advanced. The Germans are a tremendous people. Uh, I met a fabulous Dutch family at, at Brecknish, says James. Absolutely, James. And the Dutch, fantastic stuff. They, an old friend of mine was an interpreter during the Second World War. I maybe told you this story. Stop me if I have. And um, he was billeted in uh, Amsterdam. And uh, he didn't have any Dutch. And the lady he was staying with, had no English, but they hoped to get by with a little French. Anyway, long story short, he goes along to the door in Amsterdam, he knocks the door, lady opens the door, and she goes, Ha! Huh? Come in to us. Then she says to him, Wiltje and Kuppete heben. So there we are. Check it out. It's pure Dutch, and uh, I can uh, tell you that uh, it's fantastic. I mean, if you can't understand that, Ha! Huh? Come into Hus, Vilch and Kupati Heaven. Not bad, is it? Um, <coughs> I couldn't get history and the Bronze Age, and, but I've studied the cleavage, says John Rogers. Thank you, John. Uh, the people of Scotland are sovereign first, Scotty. Yes, well, the Queen is, is the sovereign lady of the people of Scotland. People of Scotland are sovereign from a royal sovereign. That's where they get their sovereignty from. Hence, the lady is called the sovereign, right? So that's uh, just letting you know. Uh, that's how it works. That's what sovereign means. You see, you wouldn't have a Scottish Parliament if it wasn't for Her Majesty the Queen. So there you go. Princess Diana, two ex-boyfriends, dead in suspicious circumstances. That's the rules for you, the big gangster. Ian, I don't see... See, you believe all this conspiracy stuff, right? Princess Diana was in a car very late at night. They were going through a tunnel like the Clyde Tunnel where the speed limit's 30. They were going at a tremendous speed. The driver had had a good few drinks. They didn't have royal security. So there you go. So if they had royal security, she would have been wearing her seatbelt and she may have survived even that crash. So there's a whole load of things going on here, Ian. So don't start all that conspiracy nonsense. Uh, no more digging in Egypt. Well, sorry, we need to do more digging in Egypt, says Ian Walker. I don't think that would go down too well. Uh, the Rosetta Stone, things like that. The marbles off the top of the Parthenon that the Earl of Elgin took. Uh, who's, uh, so who's, who's that? I don't like that, Clyde Tunnel. It scares me. You can thank my dad for that, says Angie Thompson. So there we are. Can I tell you how old the rocks are uh, where I go walking? Hmm? 325 million years old. Only a wee bit older than myself. What about that? So there you go. Um, I really miss your company, Scotty. I usually put down my books and all of the other stuff that I play with just to listen to you. All's well here in Washington, D.C., and I can't wait to see you again. 
Dinky doo says the wonderful Alan Brown. I'll just see if I can see more. Dinky doo, and you're nice with it, Alan Brown. I thank you. You're something of a top man, and it's lovely to know you're doing well in Washington D.C. Tremendous stuff, Alan Brown, a terrific guy in Washington, watching Scotty McClue, the new. Um, what's happened to our viewer, Scotty, says Chris McKinley, Chris McCauley. Uh, Scotty, says James Lafferty. Chris, you are. I can understand why Diana's driver is allowed to drive under the influence and why no one could notice this. I can't understand. Well, they were short of drivers. He was actually a decoy driver. They'd sent people away as decoys. And he would probably have gone with them. He was actually the head of security at the hotel, if I remember rightly, as far as I can remember. And um, he, so he wasn't actually a trained, um, upfront, fast driver, to my knowledge. Almost four billion years old. Geological heaven. Are you talking about yourself, James, or the rocks in my park? It's a conspiracy says Sean Fitzharris. Sean Fitzharris, stop your nonsense. Uh, you need 30 more subscribers on your YouTube channel, Scotty, to reach a 1,000. Right. Can everybody watching share Scotty McClue needs 30 subscribers right now? And then that gives us another broadcast platform. So go to Scotty McClue's YouTube channel as soon as this program finishes and click subscribe uh, so there you are where are these rocks i need some says angie thompson i can tell you angie uh he was drunk says george raffin uh, then diana was murdered yes by a crash effectively so there we are the result of a very very serious accident how is it fundamentalist religious people say the earth is only uh, sorry how is it Fundamentalist religious people say the earth is only 6,000 years old. Well, I think that's them saying this is when we started as a people. Like Christianity is 2,017 years old. But the world is, oh, I think, is it 7 billion years old that we know of? I mean, if you go up to the north of Scotland, you'll see stuff uh, billions of years old. So there we are. Uh, Scotty, have you visited Ardnamarkin? I have, James. And I was up the top of the policeman's helmet, the lighthouse, right up to the top, seeing the light. I went across on a wee ship called the Loch Buoy. I think she was owned by David McBrains. And she used to call in at the steps at the pier at Tobermory. So the... Um, McBrain's Pier at Tobermory, and there were little steps. If you're standing looking out to sea, they were to the right of you, opposite the Missionish Hotel. And uh, we used to go on board a little ship called the Loch Buoy, a little uh, boat. I think she was an ex AFC rescue, actually. She had gardener diesels in her. She was beautiful. And she would fut, fut, fut over to Ardna Marken. And um, also, uh, also, should go into um, Kilcoen, or Kilcoen, as they say up there. Scotty, you're a history teacher, you should know, says Angie Thompson. I know everything, Angie Thompson. I just have to call it to mind. Salmon, says James Lafferty. What, what are you on about, James? The North Koreans have their own calendar, Scotty, so when they say they're going to fire a missile next week, you won't know what week. Listen, have at the back of your mind, I have got friends in props departments in television who could knock you up things that look like all these missiles on parade, right? Imagine if you just bent a little bit of tin plate, painted it dark green, then got a wee, a wee cone and um, soldered that up, stuck it in the end and painted it white. Then you said, watch this missile. So there you are. Puffer, says James Lafferty. How dare you? Uh, I bet you've had a few policemen's helmets, Scotties, there. No, I have never knocked off a policeman's helmet. And even uh, when I'd had a light refreshment as a student, I would not risk it. Well-behaved man. On the Clyde, Scotty. Oh, yes, the puffer. 
absolutely, yes, several puffers. When I was wee, I was very friendly with the skipper of the Invercloy, and she was steam, and they used to take me on board at the Crinan Canal, and I would get a turn at the wheel as well. And then the last one I was on was the Spartan, or the Sparatan, as they called it out there. They always add a little bit in the Highlanders. They don't talk about the Admiralty. They talk about the Admiralty. Uh, we're just back from a holiday up in the Highlands and had a beautiful week. The only thing that spoiled it was the graffiti on the journey up, stating the earth is flat. Bad enough to graffiti, but... This is Ben Fasakali. Ben, I can't see more in case I lose the broadcast. Uh, so there we are. Um, so they're all photoshopped. Number one, taken by Cohen says Angie Thompson. Angie, who knows what's going on? Smoke and mirrors. The media have convinced the people that North Korea is a problem. Well, they have, but North Korea, remember, has got terrific mineral wealth below it. So uh, who knows? The naughty Koreans can't even feed their people, never mind fire and nuclear weapon. Scotty, what do you think of learner drivers having to be tested on the motorway driving? This has got to be a good thing. So many new drivers don't know how to handle this. I agree, Tony. I think the motorway is so fast. Now, when I passed my test, there were very few motorways. There's motorways crisscrossing the country now. And, uh, you know, well, we've got, how many have we got? We must have at least 80 of them. We've got the M80. We've got the M90. So we must have at least 90 of them. How many motorways have you got? I remember going in the M1. When it had just opened, there was no speed limit. Uh, Scotty, what do you think of learner drivers? Yes, tested. Right, well, the answer is yes, I think, probably for their own safety and for the safety of the rest of us, they should do. The Model T Ford, Scotty. I have a picture of my great-uncle standing beside his Model T Ford, which had a van back on it. He ran a grocer's shop. I knew drivers think the roads are Knock Hill Racecourse. Youngsters do. Uh, you know, I passed one, came round a corner with a fag in one hand and a mobile phone in the other. So there we go. So it would get done now, of course. Uh, should have been done then. Ridiculous. The earth's not flat, it's bumpy. The earth is round, Ben Fazakali. I'm telling you that, Mr. Fazakali. Scotty, when you passed your test, Dick Turpin was a boy. Absolutely, Doctor Who was still a nurse. You're not looking forward to being stuck behind an L driver in the M6 at 5.30pm, says Barry Wayne. I know, the M6. Have you ever seen the M6 down at the turn-off for Blackburn? Right? Do you know the one I'm talking about? It tickled, tickled trout. Tickled trout, as we say in Preston. Um, one went to the top of, of Big Ben, or Ben Nevis, the Model T. You're right, James Lafferty, it did. I can't remember if it was Big Ben or Ben Nevis or both. But certainly, the, the Model T and poor old Henry Ford's office in Detroit is apparently just flapping open to the bats and the voles. Am I right? If you're watching in Detroit, you're watching Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster, just for you, saying dinky-doo. Have we talked about the breakfast show yet? Ben Nevis, or Ben Nevis, says James Lafferty. Ben, Ben Nevis, I think. There you go. Right, excellent stuff. Now, How's the time looking? Oh my goodness, time for another share, 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 share. Time flies when you're enjoying yourselves. Are you enjoying the Sunday night shows? We're at show number 43 tonight. I was wondering if we went maybe, I know we did a number of shows while I was out of the studio, shall we say, but the receptions weren't great. Uh, shall we keep the show going? I wonder about doing up to show 52. By that point, of course, we may be in the US of A. I was nearly mowed down at the fringe by a boy racer in a rickshaw, says John Rogers. Yes, the rickshaws in Edinburgh. Fantastic stuff. Dinky do. I do admire them. Uh, we, we sip of the, of the barley water. Oh, that's lush. Absolutely gorgeous. So there we are. Very impressed with your pronunciation of my surname. Very unusual to hear it correctly. Well done, Mr. Clue. Mr. McClue. Nearly mispronounced my own there. And ben Fasakali. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I know Fasakali in Liverpool because I used to work down there on Radio City. Loved it. Loved every second of it. I remember 
uh, telling the nation that the Scousers, a lot of you hadn't paid your uh, tax on your car. So we said there were a lot of criminals. And um, one of the broadcasters that was interviewing me said, that's absurd, Scotty McClough. We're very honest. We're a very Christian law-abiding race uh, in Liverpool. How come we've got two cathedrals? So well, that's in case one gets nicked. And they went, now that's funny. I'm burning toast at 6 a.m. Can you make it 6.30? Says Angie Thompson. No, Angie. I need to be at work at 7 o'clock. So, uh, you know, that's that. A wee bit of legends here. You know the tarp, Scotty, in Glencoe? Yes, I know Glencoe very well indeed. Scotty, I'd better watch myself talking to the Royals. I might end up in the tower. And it's no get a shower. You'll end up, the ravens will be after you. Uh, they don't... They do, don't they, though, says Ian Walker. What are you talking about, Ian? I've never heard so much nonsense. Never ever talk down the Rawls, Ian, because any of the nonsense that you're coming out with is just rubbish, right? The cost is just over 50 pence a year. It's a bargain. Your TV license is 150 quid. Uh, lol, says Ian Walker. Lol to you, Ian Walker. Fantastic. I'm just looking at everything that's going on in Facebook here. Incredible. The M25 has got to be the worst motorway so slow around London. Listen, you're speaking to a man who has been caught on the M25 at 3.15 on a Friday afternoon. When I say caught, I mean caught by the traffic. It took us from 3.15 till 5 o'clock to get to junction 13 of the M4. Is that fair? What's junction 13? Is that Reading? Um, so, does a lucky bag's 50p, Zine Walker? Right. Well, don't buy your lucky bag. Support your royal family and do the decent thing. Um, Ian Walker's taking lines. Absolutely. Grant Thompson says, Grant's on. Dinky do, Grant. Give him the lines. Um... A packet of crisps is nearly 70p a pop. The rolls are cheap, says Andrew Thompson. The rolls are an absolute bargain. And nothing would change if we didn't have the royals. People would still be using food banks. Because that's to do with the party that's in power. The food banks are political. Keep the poor poor. We've seen it. You're a top man, Scotty. So much for men that can't multitask. John Rogers, we can multitask. I can sup my barley water while I'm broadcasting on television. What about that, I say, dinky-doo? And as I was telling you in one of the other broadcasts, you'll find that if you were watching a program like this on television, they'd be reading from an auto cue. This is 100% unscripted. Now, some of you have gone, it seems like it. So there you go. Hi, a grant. Hard lines, I grant, hard lines, says Ian Walker. So there you go, fantastic stuff. So, no autocue. I've got 36,000 hours of unscripted broadcasting. Could you imagine if that was flying hours? Eh? I'd be testing. I'd be testing all the stuff for the RAF. Fantastic, there you go. Uh, right, um, what else is happening? What time are we at? We've got 10 minutes, guys. Let's use it well and use it wisely. Now, quick rundown of your duties. You've seen my duties. My duties are to inform, educate and entertain you. Your duties are to subscribe to me on YouTube, to become a patron on patreon.com forward slash Scotty McClue, to go to gofundme.com and stick in a couple of quid, go, gofundme.com forward slash Scotty McClue, to follow me on Periscope, to follow me on Twitter. Um, we need to get you signed up for the Panto, says John Roger. Yes, I think I'd be very good. I can remember uh, an old friend of mine took ill and the pantomime, the theatre phoned and they said, Scotty, would you be interested in taking over the part at short notice? I said, what's the part? They said, it's one of the ugly sisters. I said, I'm halfway there already. So there you are. Um, the Queen gifted the royal estates to the Crown some years ago. It makes a profit of 700 in a year. The royals cost us a lot less, so actually they're a profitable business. The royals have one thing in this country that actually works well. Apart from me, Scotty McClure. So there you go. Uh, of Loch 
a treachin, loch a treachin in Glencoe, says James Lafferty. Interesting. Shame it wasn't 36,000 air miles, Scotty. You'd have some cracking holidays, says Barry Wayne. Dinky do, Barry Wayne. Uh, do you think of journalistic integrity of Scotland's newspapers and their editors these days? What do you think of journalistic integrity? I'm shocked at some of the newspaper headlines, right? There are very few Scottish newspapers. Virtually all Scottish media is owned out with Scotland, right? Now, that's no accident. We need Scottish media. I've told you till I'm blue in the pus, if you'd all give me two quid on uh, GoFundMe or on Patreon, on PayPal, uh, you know, PayPal, uh, get on to that for goodness sake you know I, I mean you know get some water get some money in and let's get some some working sorry Gallic water cow is tarb says James Lafferty ah there you go marvellous marvellous Tyrua is the red house Tinnabruch is the house on the hill Ruth the Mooth's away sulking says Ian Walker uh, Neil Lennon is a legend says Grant Thompson I would agree with you there Grant I think he is indeed uh, the Digger, says Joe Craig. You've made Aunt Anne's day, says Linda Renfrew. Fantastic, Linda Renfrew. Dinky do to you. I say, any relation of William? I hope you can fly, doos. So there you go, dinky doos. A dinky do is not a kind of pigeon. I can tell you that for nothing. Now, uh, what I was going to talk to you about there, we were talking about, oh yes, the breakfast show, the Scotty McClure breakfast show. Would you be up for it? <coughs> pardon me, pardon me. I do apologise. Uh, I think I need another sip. Oh, that's lovely. It's so lush. Uh, does the Queen of the Royal Family pay taxes on their income from the British government? Yes, of course they do, Tony Mac. Very much so. In fact, people don't really know this. You've got to come to McClure if you want any royal information. But what people don't understand is this country was absolutely impoverished after the First World War. And King George V, who was a lovely old guy, very strict with his family, not the finest father and husband in the world, but a very nice guy, the Queen's grandfather. Remarkable man. And um, he said, look, if you're that poor, I've got money, but please, for goodness sake, do me something on the tax side of it. I'm not paying you the money and the tax on it, right? So up until then, the royal family were taxed. And they said to the king, that's great. You give us the money and we'll not tax you. And that was a deal done after the First World War. Now, people don't realise that. So we actually owe the royals a terrific debt of gratitude. The public purse that pays for the royals pays for the whole show, all right? That's not salary for the queen or anything like that. That's for the whole running of the royal show, which is impressive, to say the least. All right. Tindrum is the house by the stream. Yes, or Tindrum. Some people say Tindrum, other people say Tindrum. Um, so there you go. Uh, have you got Voddy in that drink? No, Grant Thompson, you must not judge everybody by your own standards. Is there whiskey in the drink, says Ben Fasachary? No, Ben Fasachary. You must not judge everybody by your own standards. A royal started the First World War. No, a royal did not start the First World War. Uh, King George was around at the time. Edward VII, who was the uncle to the Kaiser, um, and George V was the Kaiser's cousin. And um, also he was the cousin of the Tsar. And he did not start a war. So get that into your head. And in actual fact, what King George said, and not many people obviously know this, after the First World War in the 30s, when he was being consulted, the early 30s, when they were saying Germany is rearming. And he said, I don't want another war. I did not start the last one. If you start a war, I'll go down to Trafalgar Square and wave the red flag myself. He was furious, absolutely furious. Now, I don't think he would have gone and waved the red flag, but he was furious because they kept talking war. And also, they, uh, they punished Germany. It was far too punitive, the um, treaty at the end of the war. So there you go. When the League of Nations was formed and they had the Treaty of Versailles in 1919. Far too punitive. 
didn't do us any good at all. That's what was responsible for the rise of Hitler. Uh, wishing you well and much love, Scotty, says Tony Mac. Dinky do, Tony Mac. All the very best to you. And um, Queen Victoria's grandson, the Kaiser was Queen Victoria's grandson. Queen Victoria's eldest daughter, Vicky, was married to Frederick William, Fritz William, Fritz, the uh, German emperor. Uh, so there you are. England declared war on the Germans twice. Um, I think there's a lot of truth in what you're saying, James. We need to check the exact um, things that were going on at the time, all the, the stuff that changed hands. Alex Salmon for King, says Ian Walker. Yes, I agree. A wonderful man, Alex Salmon. I think um, Life President of Scotland would be the title. I don't think we could give him King because he's not actually uh, in the line of succession by the law of secession. So there you are. Uh, Jane Frankie for Queen, says Ian Walker. Yes, Jane, wonderful girl. There we are. I knew Jane and Alan very well. Uh, Scotty McClure, uh, get the lines out, big man. Yes, okay, Joe Craig. Great show again, Scotty, says Ben Fasakali. Yes, because we have to dash soon. Square go, says Stay Collington. A square go. Good for you. Uh, on a circle table, says Joe Craig. Protection of British interests abroad, says James Lafferty. Always, always James Lafferty. Scotty McClure, I vow to thee my country. Uh, it's nearly like suits, says Ian Walker. Uh, protection of British interests, we've got that one. Wars in Germany, says James Lafferty. Guys, the one thing I have to say to you, it's a long time since I've heard such quality discussion and debate as we've had on this programme. If you can imagine this show on national television with a national phone in i think it would do some very very big business so if there's any media moguls out there watching and you're thinking let's get our act together and stop our falling audiences i mean we had the radio joint audience research figures came in last week that's radar that's for the radio stations and they're crowing that some radio stations have as many listeners in a week as scotty McClue has in half an hour whoa what about that? Was Robert the Bruce a traitor? No, he's a very, very fine man. He was on the loose in Tarbot, in the Tarbot Isthmus, and he was starving. He nearly died, and a goat appeared and let him suckle her. So he had the goat's milk, and that's why he made a law that all goats must roam free in Scotland forevermore. So if you go to rural bits of Scotland where there are goats, you'll see them walking about in the road. Scotty for LBC. Yes, absolutely. You should be on Scottish 6, says James Lafferty. Scotty McClure had a shoe and said dinky-doo just to you. He was going to lace it up too, and it proved to be a slip-on. Are you going to the Fringe this year, says Neil Davidson? I honestly would love to go to the Fringe, Niv. Uh, Neil, I would love to be at Niv. Neil Davidson, do you get it? Uh, just that just slipped out. I'd love to be on at the Fringe as well, but uh, I'm so maxed at the moment. Scotty, what playing card is a Scottish curse? Ooh, I would say, is it the Nine of Diamonds, Ian? Nine of Diamonds or the Seven of Diamonds? I'm just wondering. Ha ha ha, says Joe Craig. You're talking about the Earl of Stair, Ian, and the Massacre of Glencoe. Can I see your hair, Scotty? Says Steve Collington. You'd have to look very, very close to see my hair. I can tell you that. I can maybe give you a rear view. Very nice. In my, my rear view mirror. Uh, I visited Innes Hall recently, the island in Loch Awe. Uh, there'll be a Knights Templar's graves. I, I, is the Duke of Argyll not buried there? The Dukes of Argyll, are they not in Innes Hall? Um, tell me more. Um, aye, the Nine of Diamonds. Nine of Diamonds, there we are. I knew it was one of these. Um, Gary, get Scotty on your show, says Grant Thompson. So dinky do. Can you say Gowdy or Crowdy? I can see Crowdy. Do you know what Crowdy is? What do you think Crowdy is, George Raffin? Yes, says Joel Craig. I've just arrived. The burial ground of the Dukes of Argyll, says James Lafferty. Aha, there you are. Because uh, I remember um, Ian Campbell being buried there. When did Ian die? About 1972. Uh, I was at his son's funeral in Inverera. Um, that was, uh, was more recently. That would be... Um, what would we be talking about? I'm trying to think when the last Duke died. That was much more recently. But this was his father who was born 
Was he born in 99 or something like that, Ian Campbell? He was married to uh, the Duchess of a girl who was from Newton Mayans in Glasgow. Her father was um, a copper magnate. Um, Margaret Wiggum. She was the Duchess of a girl married to Ian Campbell. Yes, the latest ones are buried there. Well, I was at the funeral of the last uh, Duke of Argyll. Um, we've obviously got the Duke of Argyll now, um, Torquil, the Duke of Argyll, um, a younger gentleman, but his father was a great man, Ian Lorden, he was known as. So there we are. Um, the Duke or Errol, says George Raffin. Well, an Errol, really, um, a Duke is more senior than an Errol. So there you go. And uh, an Errol is usually the son of a Marquis. Um, so you'll find that a Duke's son is very often the Marquis, but there are secondary titles of Errol as well. So the son of the Duke of Argyle would be the Marquis of Lorn. There you are. And Queen Victoria's daughter, Princess Louise, was married to a Marquis of Lorne, and they lived in Roseneath House on the Roseneath Peninsula. Um, say, Kev, the big happy labourer is happy or else. Scotty, would you go on GBX? So there we are. I would go on a BMX, I'll tell you that. Uh, Marcus Errol, so there we are, says Stee. Um, Oh, we're getting all sorts of things coming in now. 2001. That's right. 2001. You're right. I am sitting looking at the picture now of the parade down Inverera Main Street. Parade down Inverera Main Street. In fact, I could probably show it to you. I'm just wondering if we could manage that. Um, if I could show you that picture of the Duke of Argyle's funeral on the Main Street in Inverera. Have we got time? We don't really, we have to go. Uh, so there we are. Uh, so that's it. The Duke of Argyles are a pain in the backside. I think you're talking about Cockney rhyming slang. Uh, huge headstone. So there we are. Just a minute. Hang on. Stair has got to go because he's talking nonsense. So that's that. Uh, time for the squeeze box. Talking about royalty, Scotty. I found a cigarette card of a Will cigarette packet in it, Prince Albert of Belgium. Yes, the wee Willie Woods. You're joking. I'm loving this, Scotty. So there we are. Let me see if I can just get you that picture. Hold on. Bear with me for a second. Do not dash off, guys. Do not dash off. I'm still here. I'll keep waving. I'll keep waving to let you know we're still live. And I will see if I can find for you a picture of the funeral of the last Duke of Argyle. Here I come. There we go. Excellent. Dinky do. It's time to go now, guys, anyway. But can you see that? You see that there? And that's the first Argyles carrying the Duke through Inverary Town. What about that, guys? So there you go. See? I'm not just an athlete, you know. So, now, take great care of yourselves until we all meet again. We have to dash. Talk about royalty, Scott. Oh, yes, that's right. In a seal, the Duke's Memorial, 2001. The temples are buried there. What's the wee black and white pit right behind you? That is my father uh, in the Cameron Highlanders. See if you can see it. That's Big Archie. There you go. India, 1946. Okay. See? Never a dull moment. Right, Scotty, please say bye-bye to a big happy Kev, says Gary Beard. Can you tell us a bedtime story before you go? Once upon a time, there was a wonderful, wonderful prince. And the prince said to everybody, Goodbye, everybody, goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody, of Winterzain. Au revoir and a cheerio. Dinky do every day. Have a fabulous week until we all meet again. This is Scotty McClue saying dinky do to you and many, many blessings. Scotty McClue has left the building.